Thank you for joining the Memory Matters virtual talk series organized by the Johns Hopkins Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. My name is Alfonso Alfini and I'm a research associate in the Department of Neurology at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. This presentation is on changes in sleep and circadian rhythms in aging and memory loss. During this presentation, I'm going to cover a number of areas, starting with some of the basic aspects of sleep and circadian rhythms. Then I'll go on to describe how sleep and circadian rhythms change with age and how these changes may be related to memory loss. At the end of the presentation, I'll provide some simple tips that we can all use to improve our sleep and circadian health. So it turns out that we all need sleep, and it's not just humans that need sleep, but all mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects, and fish sleep in some shape or another. As humans, we spend a tremendous amount of time sleeping, about a third of our life, which means that if we live to be 100 years old, we will have spent 33 of those years sleeping. Such a significant amount of time sleeping suggests that sleep must play an essential role in our existence. Sleep is comprised of sleep cycles that repeat across the night. So this is a sleep gram, and at the bottom are hours of sleep across the night, and on the left are the two main types of sleep. Rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep, and non-rapid eye movement sleep, or non-REM sleep. And non-REM sleep can further be divided into light sleep and deep sleep. During non-REM sleep, heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing rate uh, are all reduced, and the brain shows signs of slow, synchronized activity. During REM sleep, however, the opposite is true. So REM sleep is also known as dream sleep. And during this type of sleep, heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing rate are all uh, elevated, and the brain shows signs of fast, desynchronized activity. So these two types of sleep will repeat in 90-minute cycles across the night, with more non-REM sleep in the first half of the night and more REM sleep in the second half of the night. The desire to sleep, in part, is driven by something called sleep pressure. So in this figure, this is the sleep drive system, and at the bottom is time across the 24-hour day. On the left is sleep pressure. Sleep pressure or the need to sleep is driven by brain hormones. So the longer a person stays awake, the stronger the desire to sleep becomes. When a person goes to sleep, however, these hormones are cleared from the brain so that by the time we wake up in the morning, the sleep pressure and the desire to sleep have dissipated. Uh, while single purpose for sleep remains elusive, uh, research over the last several decades has demonstrated that sleep serves numerous functions, including its role in tissue growth and repair, energy restoration, reproductive health, immune health, physical function, cardiovascular health, appetite regulation, metabolic health, emotion regulation, memory formation, thinking abilities, and brain waste removal. Another critical factor helping determine when and for how long we sleep are circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are internal biological rhythms that cycle approximately once every 24 hours. They also help regulate essential functions in every cell and organ of the body, including the release of hormones, the regulation of core body temperature, and a person's sleep-wake cycle. So this figure is just to demonstrate how circadian rhythms and the sleep system, the sleep drive system, work to regulate the sleep-wake cycle, but they do so independently. Circadian rhythms are influenced by many factors, and the strongest of those factors is the Earth's light-dark cycle. The brain uses light that enters through the eye to help keep time for the rest of the body. But other environmental factors, including the timing of when we eat, when we exercise, when we socialize, when we go to work and traveling across time zones, these things also influence circadian rhythms pretty significantly. Even in the absence of, of light or these external factors, circadian rhythms will continue to oscillate every 24 hours, which is where the term circadian comes from, which means approximately one day. Sleep changes across the lifespan, and it's not just sleep duration that changes, but sleep quality also changes with age. So at the bottom here of this figure, you have age. And on the left-hand side, we have time in minutes. Each layer of this graph represents a different aspect of sleep. And of note are the significant increases in sleep disruption shown in blue and decreases in, in REM sleep shown in red and deep non-REM sleep shown in green. 
Additionally, although older adults need just as much sleep as younger individuals, they tend to sleep less at night. Circadian rhythms also change across the lifespan. So in this figure, time across the 24 hour day is at the bottom and rhythm height or amplitude is on the left hand side of these three physiological processes that are regulated by circadian rhythms. The dark blue line represents core body temperature, the light blue line represents the hormone melatonin, and the red line represents the hormone cortisol. The shaded area is the time spent sleeping. You can see that just before sleep starts, body temperature and cortisol both drop and melatonin rises. And these three circadian changes help to initiate and maintain sleep across the night. However, as these individuals grow older, circadian rhythms change. So you can see that they decrease in their height and they also are shifted backwards in time in what's called the circadian phase advance, which means that, which means that these individuals likely go to sleep earlier at night and wake up earlier in the morning. Additionally, if you look closely, you can see that the sleep period is shorter, suggesting that these individuals sleep less at night. Alterations in circadian rhythms are also common among people with mild cognitive impairment. So in this figure, you have time across the 24 hour day at the bottom and rest activity levels on the left. The blue line characterizes individuals with mild cognitive impairment and the red line characterizes individuals with normal cognition. You can see that the blue line is higher during the nighttime hours and then lower during the morning. Uh, so this suggests that individuals with MCI have poor sleep quality at night and less arousal or, or alertness in the morning compared to those with normal cognition. Additionally, alterations in sleep and circadian rhythms are common in people with Alzheimer's dementia. So again, we have time across the 24 hour day at the bottom and on the left we have activity levels. In this figure, the black spikes represent activity for every, every one minute of the day. And the shaded period represents the time spent sleeping. So this is an example of a healthy day-night activity pattern. And you can see a nice contrast between when the person is awake, where there's a lot of physical activity, and when they're asleep, where there's very little physical activity. On the other hand, this is an example of a common activity pattern in late-stage Alzheimer's dementia. And you can see that it's very difficult to distinguish when the person is awake versus when they're asleep. If you look at the sleep period itself, you can see that there's a lot of physical activity going on during this time frame. So changes in sleep and circadian rhythms are also associated with alterations in mental abilities. Previous studies have shown that disrupted sleep and altered circadian rhythms affect the mental abilities of individuals with normal cognition. But they also affect the mental abilities of individuals who have mild cognitive impairment and dementia. Some of these abilities include paying attention and avoiding distractions, learning and retaining new information, and handling multiple tasks at the same time. In addition to, their, to its effect on uh, thinking abilities and memory, poor sleep is also associated with other negative health outcomes, including hardening of the arteries, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and increased susceptibility to infections and irritability. Nonetheless, there are several things that we can do to improve sleep. We can become more physically active. So physical activity guidelines recommend that we engage in at least 20 minutes of physical activity per day, and preferably we would do this outside where there's exposure to sunlight. We know that sunlight can help regulate circadian rhythms and can improve sleep. We can also eat the last meal of the day two to three hours before bed, which will improve digestion and help regulate uh, hormones that are associated with appetite and metabolism. We can limit caffeine intake in the afternoon and evening. We know that caffeine is a stimulant and it stays in the system for, for about 10 hours. And so limiting this in the evening will help you sleep. You can limit alcohol intake also before bed. Alcohol is known to disrupt sleep and to, to uh, particularly to suppress REM sleep. You can also sleep in a cool environment. So a couple ways to do this, just turn down the thermostat in your room or pull back some of the covers on your bed. And maybe the most important thing we can do to improve our sleep is to maintain a regular bedtime and wake up time in the morning, uh, irrespective of whether it's a, a, a weeknight or a, a weekend night. And one way to do this is to, to establish a regular bedtime routine we, where we are winding down before bed, maybe an hour before bed, sort of preparing our minds and body 
uh, to sleep. So in summary, sleep is important for various aspects of health. The sleep-wake cycle is governed by many factors and change with age. And it's not just individuals with normal cognition who are affected, but individuals with cognitive impairment may also show changes in sleep and circadian rhythms. And like we just talked about, there are numerous ways to improve your sleep and circadian health. So in conclusion, I just wanna say thank you very much for your attention.